Um, running late this morning. I actually overslept. I'm supposed to be here by nine. It's now nine forty-six. So I had to call and apologize to Chris this morning. I had to get an Uber in, which will cost about seventy bucks on my calculations. You know, my default stress reaction is always just to throw money at any problem, which probably explains why I never have any money. Not very advisable, but also totally inevitable. Yeah. Then right. Filming. I have to do a video diary for Jordan. So straight ahead. And just follow this path. All the way around. Video diary day two. This is coming back now. I'll just capture anything that I can. Highway where you can cross it. Okay, go with the photo now. Yeah. <laughs> That's so fire. Do you know what that means? for me taking the shit back to London. Oh Cape. shit, yeah, of course. Um, and also, there's a little gift from London. I don't know if you've ever tried your hand at the harmonica, but uh, it I... is a Clark harmonica. That's and, so funny. <laughs> and I felt that that was like a little sign from the universe. So, Dude, this is awesome. Like, I've, I don't know if it's a good harmonica or not, but... It's... it's I'm, I, it doesn't matter. And this <laughs> Can just... I open it? Should I open it? Of course. You can't play the harmonica if it's on the tube. That's... That sounds like a challenge. <laughs> yeah. You need to get uh, one of those things to keep it around your head. <laughs> yeah, harmonica like, brace, yeah. yeah. I that? will definitely get one. 
expensive. So you drove mm. all the way across Canada. Mm. What was that like? It was tremendous fun. Yeah, it was awesome. You must have gone through some really beautiful parts. Yeah. I expect that it really got breathtaking when you got into Alberta. Alberta. Yeah, it did. Yeah. But the prairies are underrated, I would say. Mm. Um, oh, yeah? Yeah. I thought they were very beautiful. Yeah. I was in no hurry. I was like, this trip can go on forever as far as I'm concerned. How often do you get a chance to drive from one side of Canada to the other? Yeah, it's yeah. a beautiful mm -hmm. country. Most of what we were eating was like... Uh, Tim Hortons. <laughs> what was I doing in Vancouver? Oh yeah, most of it was... By that point, most of it was the visa stuff. I pretty much had to set up like a, All right. an office thing, like a laptop and a printer thing, and and collect my uh, documents together. Got you. Um, How long did that take in total? Most of the time. As in, once you got to Vancouver, most of the time was spent doing yeah. visa stuff? The, there's a few things like for context that need to be um, that need to be we all need to be aware of. <laughs> One is that my visa is applied for but not granted. My status is pending as a result of that. Mm -hmm. The lawyer reckons I will get a response um, in a region of three to four weeks, but that was more than. A week and a half ago the response if it's positive is positive mm -hmm. really positive um, I don't have to worry about time at all if it's negative I believe I get a visitor permit for what, automatically yeah I, I know for sure I do mm -hmm. but the question is how long that will be for it's gonna be somewhere between I believe it's gonna be about 90 days um, so three months, which still means for project wise, the time is an issue. My only issue then is money. And I don't know quite how that would navigate itself, how that would work out. It, it, it becomes a problem that I haven't got a solution to yet. Mm -hmm. I'm also back at work. I'm not getting a day off now, but between now and probably sometime the middle or late end of next week. It's a pretty grueling schedule. There's just factors at play that make this not easy, certainly not simple, mm -hmm. to, um, to work out. I to work it. around. Um, yeah. So it's gonna take some time and some, well, I mean not like, lots of time, but I need, we need to plan it carefully. Yeah, okay. All right, fair enough. Um, so when you get your schedule in, please let me know ASAP. Even though we don't know when the performance is going to be, like really make it a priority to practice. Get an hour in when you get home, even if you're tired. Make yourself a cup of tea, whatever, and just work on one song and then go to bed. Because then if you get like a half day or a day where we can go out and get a performance in, mm. then you'll not be doing it cold. Mm. When you get your schedule uh, and you have like, you have a, a shift where you're finishing it for, be like, or whoever it is, um, this day I've got this, I really need to be able to leave at this time and make it clear that that is a time where you need to leave given plenty of notice. We just need to get these last two performances in and the other little things around it. The little things around it won't take a lot. But then it will be it will be over, so to speak, and uh, we can just work it out. We just got to hand, handle these things in the right way. I know it's stressful, and you're it feels like there's a lot of pressure on you. Instead of looking at it like that's really difficult and it's going to be exhausting, look at it like it's going to be difficult, but it's only going to be for two weeks. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm wondering if maybe renegotiating my hours might be uh, on the table. It's tricky. I know, like, they want me to do 12-hour days. That's what I've been doing. That is killing me. Anyway. But, yeah. It's killing you anyway. So you should really be talking about that for yourself. Yeah, well, I mean, it's... <sighs> I know it's difficult. I'm... I know that it's difficult. It's easier to bookend 
six hour days or eight hour days or even 10 hour days with practice than it is 12 hour days. Yeah. Much, much easier. One thing that I will say though, mm. and trying to sort of like pick up where we left off from episode three, is that you don't actually need to practice that much to have a good performance. Did you notice that? Like, you didn't get that much mm. practice in and the third episode was your best one. Um, you just need to, like, get into a bit of a groove and feel comfortable and then you end up playing, mm. like, way better regardless of practice or not. Yeah. Busking in in the ideal sense that, that I visualise it and have always visualised it is there's always that element of spontaneity. Like, there's a song in the air. You can pull it from the air. Mm. I can't... Mm, get into that zone I don't know how to get there like um, it happens spontaneously wherever there's structure it's I almost feel like you need structure and in order for anything to actually happen in reality structure has to be there but it's also by the presence of structure it's in the way of it's in the way of the thing mm -hmm. like but then you must understand that there is a solution that's somewhere in the middle of this. Like, there's lots of great musicians, musicians who are your heroes, buskers or not, that have found that middle ground. Yeah, it would be amazing if you were able to sort of like show up and be at your best and like smash it out of the park every time. But the reality is, is that the priority is getting you out there opening this door for you and if it's not complete like great like perfect it doesn't matter it's like a sort of uh like barrier you need to knock down mm. to be able to do this in the way that you want to yeah yeah it's essential we stay here are you that's primary in terms of my hierarchy of goals are you um happier at the hostel this time around now that you're not the manager? Oh yeah, way, <laughs> like the stress is way lower. It's still intense, like the way that it's kept under control is we just never ever stop. So yeah, it's it's a different atmosphere there and it's better for me because I don't have so much weight responsibility on my shoulders. These are just some thoughts that I had, which I think you should like consider going in, is that one, I don't know if you remember me saying this, but like, it's, take this as you will, but no more putting yourself down. How much have you been practicing? No. Yeah, I figured. It's easy to let it, I understand that it's easy to slip by the wayside and you must be exhausted coming home and stuff, but between now and whatever day it's gonna be next week, Go easy on yourself. You are enthusiastic about this and it is still your dream. I know that it's still your dream. And I think that this project is a good thing in the sense that it's getting you there. Mm. But right now it's a bad thing is because it's like making it feel like a job instead of you doing it from your own volition, right? Yeah, and it's, a, it's a sort of, it's a commitment in between many other commitments. Yeah, and yeah. it feels like more pressuring, which sucks some of the life from it. Mm. And like, obviously that isn't what we want to happen. Mm. At this m stage, I want you to take a bit of time to change perspective on the situation a little bit, mm. from it being like an uphill thing mm. to being like something, like a challenge that you're up for. Like, you're being competitive with yourself. Mm. And it's like, I'm gonna, face this head on instead of feeling that something's chasing you. Yeah. Please think about that. Yeah, thing. like, no, that, that, that's, that is very much, uh, I'm very much aware of that, that interesting uh, little, uh, what's, what's the, the it's, you know, it's a conundrum. It's a bit of a conundrum, kind of. It's a uh, complex. It's a complex, that's right. Yeah. The necessary kind of uh, mechanics of, putting something like this on film um, detract in some way from sort of an organic arrival. What is most important is that you show up for those two times, which you will, and that you just 
take it positively and look at it as like a pra like a practice for the future mm. of doing this more and putting more time into it. Yeah. And take what was successful from last time and build on that. Okay. That's yeah, just as food for thought. Mm. Lately I've felt a little bit strange about everything. Like uh, somewhat almost overwhelmed. Like the, the project itself, um, I don't have a crazy amount of like um, recollection of how it went. I mean, I do, but it almost feels like, certainly before I went back to the hostel, I was trying a different thing. Um, or like looking at, uh, looking at never going back to the hostel. With the visa stuff, and going back to the hostel. And then of course there's everything that's politically going on at the minute, which factors in, certainly. It's very uncertain times. We're, we're potentially looking at a very uh, different future, for example, to the one I was looking at even six or eight months ago. And uh, I don't quite know how to process that. Um, and and how it interplays with like music and uh, and my dreams are like all of those things are very tangled up in a, in a way that's not easy to kind of untangle. Not an optimal time to be putting together performances, um, but because I don't feel like I'm having a bit of creative block is, is, is I guess what I'm getting at. I'm a very much a believer of mind over matter and I think that people that I look at as uh, inspirational are like people that have kind of figured out the mind over matter thing. It's not something you just decide but you start here and you make it determined and say I'm going to do this and it becomes like a, a journey from there. Mm. Um, do you yeah. believe that? Yeah. Uh, I believe that. I think it's uh, it's a very easy thing for uh, a busy person to forget about. <laughs> There's people like way more like risk taking than I am, and they do fine or they do well. Like, but what have I got to lose? Really? You're always going to do well. Though. I've got a picture on my phone. I feel like bringing it out. I saved it because I like it was like a good way of. Uh, like making you feel better about taking risks. Mm. Can you see that properly? Yeah? It's like if you don't take the risks, you're going to find yourself three, however many years down the line, looking back, it, spending all your time working at a hostel you didn't want to work at. Like hypothetically, if you went, you know what, you're right, I'm going to make a decision tonight to make this happen. It wouldn't even be that long. Two years from now, you could be in the street somewhere like you don't even know, actually making a living off doing what you are passionate about. It's not just about playing music in the street. Once you start to face, you're kind of facing your fears in a way. And once you do that, you'll look back at you doing something really like inspirational to you. Mm. And you'll be like, if I can do that, I can accomplish anything. If you start under undertaking these things, everything in your life will change mm. you're, you're, you've got to face aspects of your character mm. which are holding you back and you're like well I can't do this because I'm doing this this way the mm. world would be a better place if everybody sort of like felt good about their life and that kind of way I agree all right I have nothing to add to that because it was so well put oh. <laughs> I'm trying to give you a pep talk I suppose yeah and, no, I appreciate um, it. I hope uh, it sinks in initial performance and the, the Kensington performance you've come away feeling really positive from it for mm. one reason or another yeah the Christie one you were hard on yourself Christie one was was tough times yeah but aside from that you've come away from both of them feeling really good yeah yeah that's true I would like this sounds like a little bit much but I want you to like promise, I'm doing this for you, that you're going to come to the next performance 
take like with taking on this mindset stuff, like taking it on board, mm. turning a page for the next two performances. You want me to do that now? Yeah. <laughs> Make a deal with me. Okay. All right. I'll do we my got best. it on <laughs> film. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're All right. Doing. We'll see how it goes. All right. Mm. Nathan is a witness. That's it. Yeah, All right. Let's go it. play ball. Cool.